Hi, my name is David Rowe, and for my interview for this project, I decided to interview Colin Cassidy, who works for Arizona State University in the University Technology Department. In the University Technology Department, he functions as an assistant manager in charge of a team, um, in charge of onboarding them, teaching them how to do the job, and helping them to advance to help uh, both faculty you know, professors, students, uh, anybody in the ASU community uh, with any sort of technological issues they may be having, uh, whether it be hardware or software. Um, specifically within the post-COVID environment, which has been geared more towards ASU Sync rather than the traditional in-person learning environment that most of us are accustomed to. Um, the bulk of uh, their work revolves around um, sort of this ASU sync new environment, helping professors who have traditionally only been in person uh, transition to the online uh, world for the first time. Um, as far as what his role is in implementing the department's larger strategy, uh, he's more of a day-to-day -day manager. Uh, he's in charge of operations, um, onboarding, that sort of thing, as well as handling calls by himself. Uh, he's in charge of in basically taking the larger strategic goals and then making sure that they actually get done at the end of the day. Um, so that's his involvement with the strategy in the firm. It's more of a practical uh, doing it instead of being in charge of the uh, you know 10,000 feet up. Um, uh, he's really been a really great resource from getting to understand the post-COVID landscape uh, because these are it's not just ASU that's having to adjust to this new world, uh, teleconferencing, stuff like this. Um, it's, it's all business. It's how most of us seniors are gonna be entering the business force next year. Um, it's something that has permeated every single industry and every facet of life this past year. Um, I first met Colin Cassidy because he was a family friend and through some mutual connections kind of put me in touch with him and he's been an amazing source to get to talk to. So the, the first interesting point uh, from my interview that I'd like to get into is sort of how the university has adapted to a post-COVID world. Um, obviously, if we look at how ASU is functioning, let's say a year and a half ago, so pre-pandemic, um, it functioned largely the way it had for a long time. It was partially online, but primarily still in person. Uh, you had students in classrooms, you had professors face-to-face, -face, um, you had TAs hosting office hours, um, stuff like that. Now, the biggest uh, change we've obviously had to have is moving all of that experience online. Um, and when you move an entire university, especially a university the size of ASU online, there are a lot of um, hiccups and headaches and stuff like that. And basically, they're the ones in charge of making sure that those headaches get handled um, and make sure everyone can still learn in a thorough and positive way. Um, so obviously, this was a huge, rapid change. Uh, in March of last year, uh, we had school canceled for two weeks. Obviously, that went a little longer. Uh, so they had to somehow, within that span of a couple of weeks, really figure out how they were going to put that learning strategy online and still be able to maintain the high level of educational standards that ASU has come to be expected for. Um, so... What I thought, thought was so interesting about COVID is it's really an external factor. Um, and the theory from class that I think applies most directly to this is the pestle analysis of external factors. The first one being, sorry, political. Um, how regulations from the government affect online learning in the technology department. Legislation directly affects us. We're a public university, receive all our funding from the state. Everything that we have as a policy comes straight down from the top there's an ex extreme amount of control that the government has directly over the, uh, the daily ongoings of students, especially uh, at Arizona State University. The next one was economic. Um, how will COVID affect uh, the university? How will it affect funding? How that funding is allocated? Um, the technology department got a little bit of a boost um, economically through this. 
Um, obviously, you can't have Zoom University without a sh strong and robust technology department. Um, the next one would be social. Uh, how exactly do you deal with uh, changing attitudes, um, especially with a lot of maybe older professors that are more entrenched in their ways and how they like to teach? Uh, how do you get them to suddenly change their opinions on online learning where they might not have been you know, the most favorable about that? Um, the next one, obviously, for a pestle analysis being technological. Uh, for the tech department, this is their bread and butter. This is what they deal with every day. Um, it's really, that's the meat of what they're doing. And then you go into environmental. This one doesn't really apply as directly. Uh, but then you have legal. Uh, how do you um, provide technological support while also maintaining the limited liability with not exposing employees to the COVID virus? Um, how do you really deal with these as a manager? Um, I think this was extremely interesting talking to him through all of this. This really helps confirm that even the pestle analysis confirming this theory that it not only applies to businesses, but also applies to any sort of industry, whether it be tech or education. Um, everyone is dealing with these external factors and trying to adjust to um, these things. Um, the next one that the next uh, theory from class that I'd like to talk about would be differentiation. Um, here, you don't really see that as much because um, they don't have a head to head competitor like most industries would, um, because this is more of an organization that uh, there's a need and they help kind of address that need. Um, so differentiation applies it's confirmed for this the interview experience helps confirm that for private businesses however when you're in the public eye in these government departments it doesn't exactly transfer the way it you know should or used to or would in other industries um from my experience talking to mr cassidy um i feel like i really got a much better understanding of exactly how technology plays a factor in, um, in businesses, in the world, in education, but exactly how uh, these things aren't going away as soon as COVID's done. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with Zoom, uh, whether it's Zoom or if it's Skype or whatever the next, the big thing will end up being, we're, this is gonna be a part of our life going forward and this is something that we're all going to have to get used to. Um, the most important thing that I really learned from this experience was that um, we're really stuck with Zoom and that this has been a huge um, boon for the university and that in business or any sort of industry, you're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to think on your feet in order to stay competitive and to really maintain your position within that industry. Thank you and have a great day.